Welcome to another edition of Think6, the series where we discuss interesting topic about the next generation in wireless communication standards, aka 6G. The topic for today is phase noise measurements. Now, how does phase noise measurement come together with 6G and wireless communication systems? Well, one of the key requirements and key target as we move from one generation to the next one is to increase the throughput. In order to enable a very high throughput, there are basically two possibilities. One is to increase the bandwidth over which the information is uh, transmitted. The other way is to make the most efficient use or increase the density of the data on a given bandwidth. That requires that more data goes through the same bandwidth, so we need to have typically higher order modulation schemes. And these higher order modulation schemes mean that the different symbols describing the different data patterns are getting more dense together. So if there is noise in the system, which overlays to the different constellation points, they are harder to separate. Phase noise is one of the main contributors to the overall noise in the system. And phase noise can have thus a very direct influence on the capability in order to transmit really high data rate. So we want to make sure that phase noise is low in order to get a high throughput, to get a clear signal. Now, as we also have a nice demo set up here on the table, Alexander, can you probably give us a quick view about how the influence of phase noise towards data throughput shows? Definitely. We have the SMW200A vector signal generator and the FSWP phase noise analyzer, as well as built-in spectrum and vector signal analyzer here. Directly connecting the two instruments, we can, of course, measure any type of signals. As an example, I would like now to generate a 16 QAM signal and add some phase noise um, in the generator. So just enabling the phase noise addition here, we can already see that the constellation points get a little bit spread across the circle, meaning we have noise in the face of each constellation point. And this is caused by the noise of the carrier of our signal. When we change the value of the phase noise, so we increase, we add more noise to the signal, we can clearly see that the EVM is increasing. On the top right, we see the percentage as well as the constellation points visually getting more degraded. And thus, with denser constellations, like 256 uh, QAM, for example, we will definitely get bit errors here. Thank you, Alexander, for showing us the influence from phase noise towards error vector magnitude and how it influences the ability to decode the signal. Now, as 6G will also go in a wider frequency range than what we have seen today in the previous generations. So in 5G, we are talking about FR1, sub 8 gigahertz. We are talking about FR2 in the range of 24 to 40 -ish gigahertz range. FR3 will be also occupied, which is right in between the two bands, as I just mentioned, in 6G. But also, 6G has an additional range, much, much higher in frequency range, which is currently being researched. Very often it is referred to as a terahertz range. And one hot area where a lot of research is ongoing is the D band. So round about 140 gigahertz. Now, phase noise, based on its physics, unfortunately has the effect that the higher the frequency goes, also phase noise goes up. So when we have one synthesizer and we put it up at higher frequencies, so basically we multiply the signals or basically translate it up with a synthesizer to higher frequency ranges, it goes up also in phase noise. And there is a basic rule of thumb saying 6 dB while doubling the frequency range. What does this mean for having a stable transmission of data signals? Well it's getting more and more harder to get a very good phase noise, thus 
also a stable transmission. That being said, the higher the frequency of any communication systems, the more the importance is to understand the phase noise performance of the overall synthesizers and the system being used. And here we have now a new setup which is able to also go up in higher frequency ranges and Alexander has prepared here a nice demo for us today. Exactly. So with the FSWP we can of course measure phase noise and in the box we can go up to 50 gigahertz. But for frequency ranges beyond that, for example the D-band as mentioned by Markus, from 110 to 170 gigahertz, we also have a solution available. Using the FE170ST as signal generator, the external front end for this region, for the D-band, and two external mixers to again down convert the signal to an IF usable by our FSWP, we can now do phase noise measurements using cross correlation on our phase noise analyzer. To set this up, we just have to select the external mixer as our input and enable the cross correlation. The test setup diagram shows a really nice overview of how to connect all the components to the FSWP. And when this is done, a measurement can be performed as always. I will start the continuous measurement here and we can play around a little bit with our values. For example, now we see we have, don't have a lot of cross correlation gain. Our gray area is touching our trace. So let's increase our cross correlation factor. And we can already see a little bit of pumping, a single run. We have a stable measurement here where we have a lot of separation between our measurement trace and our cross correlation gain. And of course, you can use all the features that are available for normal operation as well. So we can go down closer to the carrier. For example, use a start offset of one hertz to speed up the measurement again, I will reduce the cross correlation factor and start a new measurement. And here you see how easy it is and how comfortable it is to measure the phase noise of your high frequency components using the FSWP with external mixers, currently going up to 325 gigahertz. Thank you, Alexander, for the interesting demo. As we have shown, Roden Schwartz is able to support you as you're going up in frequency, ensuring you have the right baseline for creating a stable communication, verifying your VCOs at those high frequency ranges to enable high throughput.